Hey y'all, Anita here. One of the best things about being on the 2018 Joko Cruise was getting the chance to sit down on a giant boat and talk to some amazingly creative people. I hope you enjoy listening to these special conversations as much as I loved having them. We're releasing one a week as a special bonus for you amazing listeners. And remember, we do need your help to keep making this podcast, so please consider joining our podcast community for exclusive perks and bonus content at d.rip slash femfreak. This week's interview is with comedian Jackie Cation, who, let me tell you, is just the funniest. She has some great podcasts, including The Dork Forest and The Jackie and Lori Show with Lori Kilmartin. She's also part Armenian. Go figure. Hello, Jackie Cation. Hello, Anita Sarkeesian. How are you doing today? I'm doing just fine. We're on a boat. We're on a boat. Isn't that weird? It is weird. I didn't really expect to ever meet people on a boat, but I've met a lot of people on this Joko cruise of ours. Right. And it's weird because it's, I would never have ever wanted to go on a cruise in my life. Is this your first Joko? It's uh, it's my second Joko, but it's my second cruise. I, oh, interesting. Yeah. Never any other cruise. I I can't imagine. The idea of being on a cruise sounded awful to me, to be honest. And Mm -hmm. I'm having... A lovely time. Right? It's really good. It's, I highly recommend yeah. this cruise. These people are incredibly kind yeah. and nice. And they're just like, hey, really like you. And then they go away. Yeah. yeah. It's not invasive. Not invasive. I love it. All it's right. perfect. Um, Jackie Cation. Yes. Who is half Armenian and yeah. pronounces your name in ways that make my skin crawl. <laughs> uh, you can ethnic it up if you need to. <laughs> I don't even have. Cashian. Cashian. So it would be, if Kashian. I were to say my last name, like full Armenian, it would be Sarkisian. Sarkisian. I don't say that. Could you, sh- I should maybe start doing that. Yeah, yeah. Hello, I am Anita Sarkisian. <laughs> and then they will expect you to have that accent forever. Yeah, which right. I can't keep. Right. It's hard to sustain. Yeah. yeah. Um, you are. Are a comedian. I am a comedian, which is an Armenian word. My father used to always say, "Look at all the Armenians!" Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Look at all the Armenians. He'd say the technicians and the uh, that is so terrible. Yes, in every I hate that. Right, you can imagine uh, the father of six. It's such a dad joke that it what are you going to do? Such a dad joke, yeah. and he is the father of six. So what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah, you just you gotta. You gotta the go more kids it. you have, the more dad jokes you gotta. <laughs> so uh, for those of you who don't get the joke, it's because you we identify each other with the spelling of our last name. So if your last name ends with I A N or occasionally Y A N, right, that means that you are of Armenian descent, and then we immediately go are you oh, armenian are you armenian as if that's like some kind of kindred spirit right and, and then uh we end up being disappointed in each other either they're it's super exactly conservative or i'm too liberal one yeah. of the things is happening that's exactly what yeah. happens but you are a comedian yep and armenian Stand-up comedy yep uh and from wisconsin you're quite originally. funny thank you yeah i, I appreciate your, your that. set the other night was delightful excellent so um how would you describe your comedy well my comedy has changed a lot, actually. I've been doing stand-up comedy for a thousand generations. Yes. I started in the 80s. I count the 80s as one year because uh, the club burned down and I was mostly drunk. But so in 90, yeah. I moved to Minneapolis and I've been doing stand-up ever since. So um, I, for decades, I mostly talk about my family, my dad and my siblings and my uncles and you know, just essentially a lot of family stand-up and then a little bit of observational. And then um, and then I more talked about, and it's been changing. Like, I got married probably 10 years ago. Probably. Probably. He would be, he would be happy to know that it was... Uh, <laughs> 12 years ago and uh Whatever. so after after like two years we're like yeah, i don't know it's we're married we're, we're married it's a we're, thing let's we're stay. stuck together yeah, yeah. yeah it's uh it's it's been going well and uh it feels like two years yeah. so it's fine and then oh, um it's kind of sweet it is adorable yeah. we're adorable he's lovely so well. and he's a, a piece of work he's uh is a, is a good piece of work oh, that sounded nice <laughs> he's not a he piece. is material for your comedy for sure oh, i totally appreciate that yeah, too yeah. and right so now i'm doing a lot more stuff about how i don't know and I've decided, you know, that a lot of my comedy is just sort of stemming recently from sort of my insecurities and what I've learned. You're only now recently realizing that. Yeah, yeah. I've never done stand-up I feel like comedy. That's like every comic. Well, you would. Th- well, that's because it's a it's a it's a new phenom. Oh. Is uh, the probably the last twelve years everybody's been mining their id and uh, and their and their super ego yeah. and uh, they've gone down this Jungian uh, rabbit hole of nonsense because they're <laughs> like I can't talk about airline food anymore 
And so, and that's great. I, my stuff was always anecdotal and it continues to be anecdotal, but it's also sort of anecdotal with sort of, they, they can be kind of bigger issues, you know, sort of like emotional. I don't know what I'm doing. Do you guys know what you're doing? Kind of stand up comedy. And it turns out no one knows what they're doing. No one does. We're all just I know sort you of, think we sound like we do, but we're faking it. Everyone's faking it, you Everyone. guys. Everyone. And if you have kids, you're the biggest fakers. And you know it. Because <laughs> you're like, look, they lived another day. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's worth a congratulations. I definitely no parade though. No parade, uh, just a congratulations. It's, you know, I've maybe been, a banner. I've been because th- I've been working on. I haven't been working on this bit, but I want to work on this bit about how. Because I know a young comic who told me a very funny, horrible story about how he went to a convention, comic con kind of thing, with a friend of his, a woman friend. They both got super drunk, and they were sharing a hotel room, and they were making out. Because they were friends, but they weren't boyfriend girlfriend. But they were both super drunk, and they're like, "Let's make that's out." That's what you do when you're right. drunk. Right, and so all of a sudden they start macking on each other hardcore. But they're so drunk, she passes out. So he tells me the story, and then he goes, "So she passed out," and there's just long pause, and he goes, and "Then I just, uh, I, I put a, a blanket over her, and I, I didn't do, yeah, I didn't do anything. I like, I didn't, and I was like, yeah, no parade." No yeah, parade no for not cookies. raping your friend. Yeah. I was and, like, uh, where is this going? Right. And But it reminded me of something equally horrible that I said to my sister who asked me to take care of her kids for three days once. When her when her daughter was three and her son was nine months, her and her partner were having, uh, they were exhausted. And she was like, and she, my sister has asked me to do nothing ever for her. And she was like, Please, will you take care of my kids for a couple of days? Uh, we are going to kill each other and we need to sleep. Uh, and I said, yes, of course I will. And I used to do a lot of childcare. That was my okay. day job for a long time. So, uh, I spent three nights, four days with these kids and she planned it so that like literally a village to help me. She, uh, there was daycare. The boy had, uh, my nephew had uh, an earache so he could go to daycare full days, but whatever. But uh, by the end of it, she comes back and I said, oh, my God, I didn't shake a baby. I didn't yell at a baby. I was the best. And she just looked at me. She goes, yeah, that's why we asked you. Yeah. <laughs> we were hoping you wouldn't abuse our children. Yes. And yes. Uh, that's usually no trophy, hope. no medal, yeah. no medal for being a decent human being. Absolutely. So I because th- like I think that there's something there stand up wise. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So um, there. On the ship, uh, there are several female comics. Yep. And of of different generations. Yeah. Or maybe two. Two generations. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, and it's an, I feel like there's an interesting – like there's been a little – I was on a panel about women at work, which yeah. had a bunch of comics on it. Um, but I feel like there's a difference in, in female ge- – uh, words. I have them. Right. Uh, that like – Comedy is very male dominated. It is very mean to women traditionally. Yeah. yeah, it's very like the the jokes about women can't be funny or aren't funny Bitches, have man. been what around. Are you gonna do yeah, about? and so like, do you? I guess like, can you speak a little bit to like either your experience or if you see a generational shift and like where you think that that's going? Oh, for sure. It's been it's so great. And I have a podcast with Lori Kilmartin who writes for Conan and is exactly my age. And we are four days apart, and we've been doing stand up both since the eighties. And uh, all we do is talk about every time they interview a woman comic or of our generation anyway, as they would say, what's it like to be a woman comic? And it's the dumbest question ever, because how could you know what it would be like to be anything but? Yeah. So um, she asked me to do this podcast, the Jackie and Lori show on Nerdist Network, um, to um, to address that stupid question every single week. She said, essentially, we'll just be talking about being comics, but it it's a hilarious question. So yeah. um the difference between now and and then is that there's so many more women and there's more decent men. And the yeah, more decent yeah. men are booking more women together. Back when we started, literally, it was a like a sort of a, a wolf pack kind of mentality where they would cut us off from the other women. And then you would be in a room with a, just a pile of uh, just idiots. And uh, you'd, you'd be in a room with a bunch of dudes, some of them decent men. Some of the, uh, one or two of them sometimes, so gross, and you had to fend that, those shark infested waters by yourself. Yeah. And you learned how to do it by joking and by taking it and by fighting back about it in the ways that you did. 
today, the greatest thing about young comics, young women comics today is, and, and they still have these, I mean, they still have to deal with these same of course, things, of course, right? Absolutely. Um, but more often than we did, they have each other. So like when some fuckwit says something like, Hey, we're going out to breakfast. You could, uh, you could sit on my face. Uh, oh. and which has been said to me more than once. That's Gentlemen. not even a fun. Gentlemen. Just be original. Keep writing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at all times. So uh, my favorite thing with, uh, like I, so sorry, I'm derailing you. Uh, I get harassed online. It's yes. a thing that happens sometimes, sure. a lot, all the time, every day. And, uh, and you're not a comic, so you don't know how to deal with hecklers. I, and you were surprised. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I was derailing for is that I at least appreciate when it's original because it's all the same. So like, if you're going to be a dick to me, just yeah. like be creatively dickish, right, I right. guess. Cause then I can like, it's have like, a conversation with someone about it. Be like, look at this funny, stupid right. look new at, thing. Look at you wrote. Good for <laughs> you. Look at you not copying and repeating everybody else. Maria Maria Bamford, who is on this boat, yeah. uh, uh, she will occasionally get comments from people uh, who tell her to hashtag kill herself. And, and Very she's, original. Right. And she's like, you know, it's great minds think alike. I think about suicide a lot. And yeah. uh, so good for you. And uh, and uh, so yeah, um, so women uh, so they have, have each, each other, other now. So yeah. if some f- idiot says something gross, you can at least l- lock eyes with another woman coming and go, well, look what just and you could just and and then if there's two of you, the decent dude in the room will sometimes then pipe up because then you can go being like, the ally, right, Hopefully, right, because then you could I could say to Beth Stelling, ah. Oh, Gentle guys are so funny. Uh, what the fuck? And with the commentary <laughs> and Beth telling, I'll go, what? Yes. What are you doing? And then she'll like, the thing is, is it's like volleyball. I can lob it to her. She can then lob it back to the bad guy. Yeah. And then good guy could pipe up and go, yeah, fucking keep it in your pants, idiot. And then, yeah. then that, that dialogue is the first time. I remember the first time I saw that happen. And that dialogue that just happened actually uh, just happened. Me and Beth Stelling and this other guy. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, that just happened, which was awesome. But I've, the first time I saw it happen was probably three to five years ago. Okay. With two other women comics. And no, no, it was Last Comic Standing. I've told this story before, but Last Comic Standing, I'm in a, a limo with Mary Mack, Andy Smith, uh, Andy Smith is a hilarious comic from uh, Wisconsin. So is Mary Mac. Anyway, uh, me and then um, a bunch of dudes. And um, I'm talking to three San Francisco comics who are brothers. And we're having a fascinating conversation about what superpower we would like mm-hmm. if we could have a superpower. Very good, important uh, conversation. All comics. I'm always into it. Uh, teleportation. Anyway, so. Uh, if that's yours. Yeah. Yeah. Who wouldn't want to? I, I hate. I want to be a technophile. Oh, interesting. I want to talk to computers. Oh, interesting. With, with my mind. The guy in the chair. Anyway, the guy in the chair. Uh, the, no, the uh, nice. <laughs> that would be. Uh, we uh, are on a geeky ship. I a, can occasionally pull out the references. Spider-Man: Homecoming reference. The guy in the, the chair. Guy in the chair. Yeah, Spider-Man: Homecoming, the new Spider-Man. Movie. Yeah, I watched that. Yeah, it was. The, it was actually the, a good movie. The, yeah, the big kid who was his friend. He was like, "I want to be the guy in the chair." Oh, that's right. Yeah, oh, God, that's sorry that you had to explain so much. Oh about. no, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah, yeah. So, um. The uh, um, you were talking about? to people in the st- oh, in, 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 in the limo. Okay, the limo so all of a sudden, Mary Max says, "Why don't you ask Jackie Cation that question?" And uh, and I look up from my fascinating conversation about superheroes, uh, and I look at Mary Mack and Andy Smith, and Andy Smith has this just look at her face, and I go, "What are you guys talking about? What?" And uh, young Adam Hunter at the time, uh, who uh, was a dum dum, uh, says, "Never mind." And I was like, <laughs> what? What? And he goes, I just asked if they, if one of these guys had to fuck somebody in this limo, who they would fuck. And I said, oh. Adam Hunter, we are trapped in this limousine for hours. You have got to keep it together. Which now looking back at it, cause that was tw- 10 years ago or something, uh, the current dialogue of that is you were at work, dum dum. Mm-hmm. You please be at work. Yeah. So, do you find that if uh, this is purely anecdotal, but like the dudes that that got called out in your presence or that you were aware of, do you find that they have actually shifted? moved forward? Yeah. Have they grown up? Have they learned from that? Those experiences. Some of them. Some of them. Yeah. That's the, that's the good news. Is that I think if we, because genuinely, we're three generations from women not being able to walk around by themselves in the West. Yeah. So. 
Seventy five percent. It's insane. Right. Yeah. So like literally a hundred years ago, seventy five percent of all men. I mean, men were alerted to the fact that we wanted to vote and that we wanted to be able to have our own carriages and maybe a job and our own money. And seventy five percent of the men on the planet were like, or in the West, at least at the time, were like, what do you want to do? <laughs> OK. I guess well, do you want to hang out later? <laughs> and yes, yes, we'll hang out later. But 25% of the men genuinely are still having a problem processing it. And so when you alert them, I think these are all percentages I have made up on the fly. Sure, sure. That 20, 22% of them. <laughs> Seems reasonable. Seems right, accurate. Are like, oh, what? Okay. And then, I mean, literally, just a just a sort of a, a back of the head kind of slap. Go, hey, dumb dumb, you know that you're being dumb, right? And they're like, no, am I being dumb? Oh, okay, I'll I'll try to stop being dumb. Okay, and, and they, yeah. I, I, gen- I, I notice that a lot too with like the conversations between uh, uh, like that, especially that I've had about creator, like male creators in video games yeah. and, and otherwise of like whether the sexism and racism is intentional or not, which, oh, you right. know, sure, like that is a conversation that can happen because sometimes it, it significantly is intentional. Like oh, yeah. the, I've, I've heard stories about publishers coming down to game development studios and being like, you need to sex up these characters or slut up these characters, quote unquote. Fantastic. But also I've heard lots of stories from dudes who just didn't know any better. They didn't um, know that like the sexualized position that they used for their character was bad because every other video game had done it and nobody had told them and right. privilege blinds you to things. So sometimes it can be as simple as, Hey, maybe don't do that. Right. Everyone's in their own fishbowl. And traditionally, as a middle-aged white lady, uh, my fishbowl is not as nice as a straight uh, middle-aged white guy's. Like, he has a nicer castle and probably his yeah. his treasure chest opens. Uh, so, uh, but my, but my fishbowl is much nicer than a 17-year-old black young man. Yeah. That kid's fishbowl is fucked up. And if I don't take the time to look into his fishbowl, I'm never going to know. And what, and if, and if, and if nobody ever alerts me, I'm never going to know. Privilege as fishbowls. As fishbowls. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen, and non-binary folks. Um, did you watch the Marvelous, did you watch Marvelous Miss Maisel? Oh, the you know Amazon what? Uh, comedy, I comedy stand up comedy. I yeah. have I have the Prime. I haven't watched it, but I hear it's great and I'd Jen Kirkman curious. wrote for it. Oh, nice. Yeah. So um fun. I'd be curious what your thoughts are on it, but that will not happen at this moment. Not time. at this moment. Yeah. Next next time. I've I've watched I watch Agents of Shield. Uh almost all cooking. Did it, did it get better? Yeah. It was so bad. It was great from the beginning. And uh, no. Yeah. Cool. I don't yeah. trust your judgment uh, now. Uh, like just now, with that one show. Uh, and what you should know is that you are incorrect. Uh, and uh, uh, Agent Coulson forever. And then uh, moving <laughs> sure. forward. Fair. fair. Uh, and then Mockingbird. Uh, now gone. Very sad for me. Mockingbird. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was. Uh, the Hunger Games. That's what I think of with Mockingbird. What's Mockingbird? Um, it was. Uh, who played uh, with the sticks? <laughs> <laughs> my mar- my Marvel uh, my Marvel uh, Who access played with the sticks. Uh, Chelsea Kane wrote the comic. Uh, what the? We're f- talking about a superhero thing. Yeah, superhero on Agents of Shield. Oh, Who I did, don't fucking know. I didn't watch a, that show. Oh, right. Well, because I thought oh, it was I terrible. Love, I love this this sweeping generalization. Then don't we love it? I watched then, six episodes of Agents of Shield and couldn't get into it. But if you tell me that it's better after the first season, then maybe yeah, I'll check it out. The thing is, is if you like superhero shows, you're going to want to watch it. I think third season. All right. So, yeah. Can I skip straight to that? Yeah, and yeah. Not it's pay it's monster the of the crap? week. Don't worry about it. All right. It's a. Uh, uh, it will take you literally two episodes to go. Oh, I see. Yeah. And then, uh, and then you're like, yes, comic. Bo-. And the thing, I read a lot of comic books, so um, okay, it is episodic like that. And they've been doing this thing where they're doing six episode arc okay. ideas, where it's literally, uh, like. They got taken over by Hydra. They got t- sure. done these as different one does. Things, as one does. And then, so I'm watching Agents of Shield. I'm watching a lot of cooking programs, and then I'm watching um, the Star Trek New Discovery. Interesting. Mm-hmm. We have a Star Trek Discovery podcast where we recapped it every week. What? And we fucking hate it. Int- I'm on episode uh, eight. I haven't watched right. the last five. It doesn't get better. It is the Star Trek we deserve, not the Star Trek we need. Yeah. Yes. 
Uh, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's not good. I hate that show. But uh, we do. I'm just going to shout plug this again. I've plugged Please. it 100 times on our podcast. But we have a special bonus episode on our Star Trek Discovery podcast. Yeah. So even if you like Star Trek Discovery and don't want to listen to us talk shit about it every week, which <laughs> I appreciate, there are people who like it. So we'll, we're still here for you. Right. Um, Is I'm, it the orcs? Is that what you don't like? The oh fact that God. the Klingons are the orcs? Uh, <laughs> so okay. Let's talk about this on the beach. Okay. Um, but we, I ran into a woman randomly at a game development studio that I was touring who got her degree in mycelia or mycelium <laughs> and was like, I yeah, have introduce problems. Introduce me to her. <laughs> yeah, she was like, I have problems with the show. Let me tell you. And I was like, can you record your problems with the show? So we have a bonus episode of this woman who is a delight talking about all of the things wrong with the science of the show. And it is amazing. That yes. was like mind. That was a mind blown sound that was a for mind those blown, that yeah. didn't understand right. what that weird thing <laughs> so, that came so out of my mouth was. Anita Sarkeesian does sound effects, you guys. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah. You know that uh, one of Andy's best friends is uh, works at JPL. Yeah. And he is an astrophysicist and, uh, and an artist, actually, because he does the Spitzer telescope. He okay. does the renderings of the Spitzer telescope uh, data. Okay. And releases them. So uh, there's a great episode of The Dork Forest, which is my podcast, uh, about uh, him talking about how you could call it colorization, but I will be enraged. Uh, but that is the best description of what he does to the, yeah, to the yeah, things because yeah. everything in space is in black and white. Yeah. And so he essentially makes a key, a map key, and then colorizes. And so all the beautiful pictures that come up from the Spitzer are by Robert Hurt. And he loves the new discovery. You should have him on. No. Because he is no. a science guy as well. I will not accept anyone who likes the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. We talked about, because we're going to come back for the second season, and we talked about actually having Interesting. guests. Interesting. Interesting that uh, you don't like a thing and yet continuing. So I actually am. So we have uh, several listeners who have given up on the show, but but listen to our <laughs> podcast about it. And I just feel like I need to stick around and suffer for them. Oh, interesting. I care about our listeners. It's so beautiful how you give. I give. You give back. With my full heart. Um, Jackie. Yes. Kacian. Yes. Kacian. Yes. Kacian. Anitia. 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 I can't even ask Sarkisian. Sarkisian. Um, Sarkisian. Uh, Sarkisian. Where can people find out more about you? Well, my name is Jackie Kacian. And so uh, it's K-A-S-H-I-A-N. And so it's JackieKacian.com. It's at Jackie Kacian on all the things. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Whatever. Um, my Facebook page is Jackie Cation, Joke Smith, uh, for no particular reason. And then, um, no, because it has nothing to do with I have with two your podcasts The Dork Forest, right? <laughs> the Dork Forest <laughs> and, uh, The Jackie and Lori Show. Uh, the Dork Forest is on All Things Comedy Pod Network and the, uh, uh, Jackie and Lori Show is on the Nerdist Network and, um, the Dork Forest, I interview people about what they love. You just recorded an I episode. Did. And, uh, it was Jackie actually Lurie. not about what Any I love, of that but you should all. still listen to it. We do dork out pretty hard, though, about <laughs> Armenians. And then, um, and then the Jackie Lori is just, uh, st if you like stand up comedy and minutia, that is a rabbit hole of some, some grumpy, uh, middle aged white ladies talking about doing stand up for 4,700 years. I can't wait to check it out. Uh, you are wonderful. Your it's show so on great. the ship was so great. Thank and you. thank you for being on my podcast. You are welcome.